Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. In spite of our uh, adversities and our going through our uh, shortcoming and our uh, down calling and everything else that goes on in life, we serve a God that is so loving and kind and merciful and giving and faithful. Amen. And uh, the God of the Spirit of Ten. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Time after time after time. Fall. Amen. Mm. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we are the living God. And He's so faithful. Yes. I want everyone that has your Bibles this morning, um, turn with me, if you will, to the book of Luke um, and the uh, 15th chapter of Luke. And beginning with verse um, 11. And it, it talks about, gives you a story. Jesus gives a parable, true story, amen. And, uh, true short story about um, the lost son. Uh, amen. <coughs> amen, the lost son. Amen. Yes, and he gives us this um, parable and uh, talks about a son that was lost. All right. Amen. Come Amen. on. My God. Son who had lost his way. Everybody with me here, I'm going to um, give you a reading here and talk to you. unto them his living. I thought again it's very carefully, y'all. You must understand this that one asked for the portion, but the father divided unto them. Amen. The both of them. Amen. Their living. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted, and there wasted, his substance would rot his living. <coughs> and when he had spent all, everybody say, A double L. A double And he had spent all, and nothing left. There rose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. Verse 15 said, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Right. And he sent him, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. Right. And he would fain have filled his belt, and and he would fain, and then would fill, fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Amen. 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 In other words, he left home in good shape. Uh -huh. Left home with plenty. Uh -huh. And so much that he went out to party. I want to use the term he party. In other words, had a good time with what he had, yeah. his inheritance. Amen. 
then when he had spent all, he ran out of money. Funds and and all. Then came a famine over there. You can see this the book. And uh, had one. He needed. He needed to eat. Right. He needed bread. He needed to. Amen. He needed to live in our world. But he couldn't find nobody that would help him or give him to him. Yeah. He did join the acceptance to a citizen of that country. And this citizen, this man, put him to work. Yeah. And he put him to work in the hog pen. Yeah. Y'all share with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man didn't feed him food that he was eating, he fed him husk. And the swine did eat. That's what he chose to go and no man gave him that. But the word of God said, when he came to himself, right. he said, how many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish of hunger. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Can I go with us? How many of you know that um, Seems like when everything goes wrong and everything is down, and the only time you can get really settled enough to realize, come to your senses, that you don't have to stay or remain in the predicament that you're in. Yes. Y'all better hear this. Amen. It don't mean because talking to you that you have fallen and have failed. Not that. The thing that really is significant about this is that the question will be, will you remain there or will you get up? Y'all stay with me. Amen. Amen. So in this particular thing, the Bible said, amen, Jesus said about this man, said he, and when he came to himself, he said, how many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I want y'all to keep that in mind on that 17th chapter when he came to himself. Amen. And verse 18 said, I will arise, I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. Yeah, yeah. And before the yeah, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Right. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Yeah, yeah. He didn't feel worthy to be called son. He had he felt within himself he had messed up. He erred along the way. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Amen. Somebody shout you. Yes. yes, Lord. And ran and fell on his neck. Yes. And kissed him. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand. Yes, Lord. And shoes on his feet. Yes, Lord. And bring hither. And killed. And let us eat and be made. Yes. For well, this my son will be and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be married. Yes. Can I get away? 
I want to use what subject this morning outside of uh, life itself, Christ, first of all, and life itself. One of the greatest things we could receive as a father is to receive his family coming home serving the Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank, yes. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And we're going to call Jesus. this a happy Father's Day gift. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. 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 Along with other subjects that I preached on uh, about this, um, we're going to talk about that too, but in the midst of the for the <coughs> adversities of life. Amen. I want you to say that Father knows best. Yes. Amen. Amen. Father knows best. Amen. 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 In the midst of all that we go through, the failing and the errors and all the mistakes and all that we have yes. in life, Father knows, knows best. Yes. Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 You know. Amen. One of the greatest gifts we can receive in this life is the gift of salvation. Yes, Lord. This is the greatest gift. Because the gift of salvation sets us, set us in liberty and freedom. Amen despite of and in spite of situations, circumstances, problems, turmoil and war, conditions, and all that we may be confronted with in this life. Salvation, freedom, most importantly, free from sin. Amen. Yes, that you no longer have to yield to those things which is contrary yes. to the will and way of God. Mm -hmm. And then all right. Yes, all right. Sir. Amen. Amen. The, I, I take this as a gift, a Father's Day gift. Amen. Is that when his son uh, returned? back home. Amy and I, um, we know about the um, things that his son went through and and uh, faced and was confronted with during the time when he left home. I, I want to say again as another message that I preached on that um, the son left home, amen, and with you. Amen. In other words, when you're immature, God's age, you are. You're a boy. Yes. But he came back a man. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. When you're doing stupid stuff and immaturity stuff and stuff that is elementary stuff and stuff like that, then you are immature. Elementary. Right. But when you have matured and have maturated and come to that place to where you are, man, you, as Paul began to say that when I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought as a child, in other words, I did as a child. But when I became a man, I put away those childish things. Amen. What are you talking about, Brother Pastor? I said I would talk about the times that when we are immature, we have done some dumb things, Amen. as a matter of fact, in life. As I focus on verse 7, let's see, as I focus on this verse here, um, I want to 
get to a place because that where he grew up that day. Amen. In verse 17, the Bible said in this same set chapter of St. Luke is that verse 15 of uh, St. Luke and 17 said, and when he came to himself, he said, I, I want to work on that just a little bit. See, when we come to ourselves, what does that mean, my pastor? It means that, that the, the son uh, um, was raised up the right way. Now we hear this. He, he was brought up the right way. Amen. And all that was in him, those things were still in him. They was that still in him. Because the father raised him up and brought him up the right way. The Bible declares that to train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, then he will not depart Thank you, from it. Thank you, Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. So in other words, the only thing that he was reared up with the end is still in there. Amen. Amen. If you don't think that's so, you can find some English teacher that major in English. <coughs> and if they came up from a southern type family that was out in the country where we short words and we use the words right, you know, we cut words off and show them up, ain't he is and all that. You will find an English major begin to say some of those things because it might just <laughs> might just rise up in them at that time. Amen. 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 I always thought proper English was that English that people was somebody can understand. <laughs> and to me, that's proper English because if it weren't proper English, then how could you understand? That's right. That's, I mean, that's my philosophy. Amen. That is proper English. You understood? Ain't is seed. I seed it. You understood what I was talking about, right? So to me, it's proper English. Amen. But this was raised up. He was raised up real up, right? He was brought up right. Amen. But even as a child, that's why we had to be trained because we we are, we were born into with foolishness. The child already got foolishness already in him. Amen. It lies right there within him. That's why he has to be trained. And as we train them up in the way that they should go, it won't depart from them. They may ignore, they may quench the spirit of it, but it does not depart from them. It does not mean that it's not in them. That's the reason why we should never quit or trying to reach them regardless. Because it's still in them. Sometimes they need a reminder. Amen. And then again, sometimes you must leave well alone and let it go because as you can see in this particular story, the, 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 the man, the father, did not go running his son down. Because they, in life we must come to a place in our life to realize and to be. Not what somebody else wants you to be. All right. Because we're all held accountable. Yes, and, and the thing that I brought my kids up with was that to accountability and responsibility. Amen. Amen. Right. You make a spill, clean it up. Preach on it. Confess your fault one to another. Yes. This is word. You make a mistake, be man enough, woman enough. I'm sorry. Yes. I did. Yes. Amen. Yes. Fess up. Because integrity is the best and greatest policy you can have as a human being. Amen. Let your yay be nay. I mean, your yay be yay and your nay be nay. 
Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because anything that comes after that is evil. Amen. Amen. In other words, if you're going to do this for me and you say yes, I'm looking forward for you to do it. And then you turn around already knowing your heart you're not going to do it. It brings about it creates evil. If you're not going to do it, be bold enough, straight up enough, and say no. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. Just say no. Now, if the time comes that you can develop, that you can't do, you can call back and say, well, look, I found the time, and yes, I'll, I'll do it. I'll be right there. But don't tell me yes, and you don't show up. I'll say with me. This young man came to himself. He left home a, 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 a child, in other words. Can I say that? Because it was, it, was, it, was, uh, uh, it was an immature act. He wanted his inheritance. He wanted his portion, what was to be given unto him. And he wanted it not tomorrow, but right now. Amen. Father didn't argue with him. There was no debate. He just gave to them, both of them. And he, heart, he, he uh, 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 gave to them what was due to them. But one of them, the youngest one, and everybody would cut down and say he went out and did this and he did the rocks of living. He burned up everything that he had and he utilized his wealth, his monies and stuff in the wrong way. He just blew it. While the other one stayed at home, right? And he did what they so-called did the right thing. <coughs> it's kind of puzzled me in a bit because sometimes they can be that one at home Y'all help me with this. Could be the one that wanted to do what the one that was bold enough to do. Yeah. And all set in heart of the one that you don't think that will do is the one that worse than the one that did do. The one that, can I break this down? The one that did do was honest with himself and honest with his father. Amen. Y'all will see this later because you're going to find out that why is the one that left at home so envious now of the one that went off and did what he did? Right. Instead of celebrating, he's mad. Something wrong with that one, right? Amen. But this young man came to his sister. He came to himself, simply meaning he has something to flare up in him of who he is and who he was. And that was that training that he had before leaving home. Something jumped on him and he wanted to go to his school. And he wanted to go and sow his oats and everything else out there to experience life and to see what's out there and he did but it didn't make him the worst one and then he went out to experience life on his own and that's what we all supposed to do can I get a witness here once you have reached age and matured and you have reached maturation and it's time to leave home then you leave home and you go cleave to your own family Right? He wanted to experience, to experiment, I mean, when the experiment said that, to experience life of his own. Because we must understand no person can live nobody else's life for them. Amen. I want this, this is Facebook Live. Amen. I want everybody to know that stop trying to live somebody else's life. You can't do it. God did not design us to live nobody else's life. Amen. We can barely take care of ours and we need the help from God in order to do that. Amen. 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 Do you not know that when you begin to try to control another person's life, it is an act of witchcraft. Amen. Uh, I don't know. I don't even believe in witchcraft. But this is what this is. 
the act of. It is the spirit of Jezebel. This is the spirit of controlling another human being. God didn't design us for that. Let every individual that is of their own right mind experience life for themselves. to do or what you would have them to do but let them make their own decisions amen get out of the way if they need to be there for them don't try to live a life for them you can't
Now you got to wipe his head. So he came to himself. He came to himself. He didn't have nobody had to tell him. It was already in him. It was already there. It was already in him. It was already there. And but he had to come to his. Now watch this. I want you to hear the story. Now he was. He went. And as he came to himself, the Bible says. And this is what he said. This is what he said. And when he came to himself, he said, "How many higher servants of my father's house? I mean, have." bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger. So he realized, wait a minute, there are servants of my father and at my father's house and where he is and they have bread enough to eat and, and also have much to spare to throw away waste. And here I am, I'm eating husk from, uh, with the swine and, and, and I'm living in the hog pen. No, no, he realized he didn't have to stay there. Watch this. Watch this, it ain't done. So, and then he said that, um, he said, I will. See, that's the thing about us in life that once we get awakened by what we was trained up and raised up and brought up into the law to be, we must realize then we can state something, be bold with them with a bold statement and say, I will. He didn't say I might or I might try or maybe. He said, I will. Y'all want to hear this? He said, I will arise. In other words, I will get up. So I I'm getting up. Yeah, I've been knocked down and I'm down there, but guess what? Keep on looking at me. I'm getting up, bro, baby. I'm going to get up from here because I don't know. This is not what God made me to be. This is not what Jesus came and died for me to do or to be, to be down like this. I'm going to get up. Oh, yeah, I've been knocked down. But guess what? I'm getting up. Yeah, Can I get a witness here? Yeah. Oh, I've been down before. I've been backed up in the front, but guess what? I'm coming out. Look at neighbors, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Yes. Amen. Keep on looking at me. I know I look kind of terrible right now. Things look kind of bad and aggravating right now. Things are a little agitating right now. And things look kind of rough. But guess what? Keep on watching me. Keep on looking because guess what? I am coming out. I will arrive. I will come out of this. Amen. Yes. Yes, yes, I'm coming out. Look at this. I'm coming out. Coming I'm out. coming out. Coming out. Amen. Yeah. So this is what he said. That he spoke positive. He said, I will arise and go. Look at this broad statement. And go to who? My father. And will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. That's the part that we need to get to. We must have a, a true repentance and be godly sorry about what we have done. Outside of that, God don't hear us. He began to say, I have sinned, first of all, against heaven. I says, I'm, I'm going to break it down for you. I have sinned, first of all, against my Father, which art in heaven. Holy be his name, his kingdom come, his will be done, in earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. Somebody shout yes up in here. In this earth, as it is in heaven, I have, first of all, sinned against him. I said, true repentance, true, true repentance is God made sorrow. You really mean it. It's a heartfelt thing that you go through emotionally and you don't want to do it again. You are done with whatever that came and overwhelmed you and overtook you at that time. And you don't want to do it again. If you begin to start thinking about doing it again, it'll make you sick. Amen. Amen. Everybody said true repentance. True repentance. Amen. When you are godly sorry, with a godly sorrow in your heart because you have sinned against the Father which are in heaven. Holy, hallowed and holy be his name. His kingdom come. His will be done in this earth of mine, in this earthen vessel, 
Amen. In earth as it is in heaven. Lord, make me into what you would have me to be. Mold me and shape me into all that you have purposed for me to be in this life and in the life to come. Somebody shout yes up in here. Yes, yes. That's when you've got me sorry. Yes, Lord. Not wanting to get well so you can go and do wrong again. Amen. Some people want to get well so they can go and add sin to sin. Yeah, they're sick and they, they, they beg for help. But soon as you get healthy enough, you're going to get in more sin. Amen. Y'all better hear this. That's why you suddenly lay hands on no man, nor partake in any man's sin. But keep yourself pure. Leave it be. And especially when their sin is already open before judgment. You know it's open before judgment because you're looking at it and you're seeing it and hearing the confession. And you quickly want to lay hands to help. Leave it be. Let God deal with it. Because it's good when God chastises us. Prove that he loves us. But if he don't take care of that or chastise that, you are none of his. You are a master. You're none of God. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be his name. Amen. His kingdom come. Not your kingdom, not my kingdom, but his kingdom come. Amen. His will be done. Not my will, not your will, but God's will be done. In heaven as it is in earth. In earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Y'all yes, better hear this. Amen. This young fellow knew that he had wrong. He had wrong. To the place, watch this. Because you're going to see all of this repentance going on here. Watch this. Now I want you to see what he began to rehearse before he got to the Father. Ain't it something? He got to the Father before he got to the Father. Y'all, <laughs> y'all missed that one. He got to the real Father before he got to the Father, the earthly Father. Ain't it? Watch this. And the Bible said, he said, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Y'all miss this part because that's what happened. You better look at the capitalism of that first letter. He talked to God first. He repented unto God first. And he said, well, Father, I have sinned against you. Heaven. Amen. He said this and will say unto him, watch this. See, if we go to God first, we won't have to worry about the rest. Now you see here, look, I will rise and go to my father, which is a lowercase f, right? And watch this. And we'll say unto him, watch this. Father, now this right here done told you something right here. Amen. Father. Amen. Right? I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Amen. Amen. Number one, this son saw God the Father in him. In his father. Amen. Now, watch this. Now, if the father didn't try to get in the way of this son leaving and going, exploring, and also with the exploit that happened, why should anybody else mess with him? He had to go because he would have still had a wandering mind. How is it out there? in that world. The experience, that's the reason why you hear me say this, and I don't mean to be harsh about this, but 
And somebody jumps up and say the things that they didn't do, and I've always been a good person, I, I never cussed, and I've never been to any clubs, I never hung out, I was a good girl, good little girl, I was a, I was a nice young boy, and I did this, and I respected everybody, and I did all this, and that, and it sickens me. Because number one, I wanna hear what you've been through and what God has brought you out of. I want to know something because I know this for a fact, and this is factual, that we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God Almighty. So what things are you trying to lift yourself up to make yourself perfect when you are not perfect? Only one that is perfect is God Almighty. It sickens my spirit to hear that. I want to hear where you've been, what you've done, and what has happened, and where God, what God has brought you up. That you begin to say that, look, I was down, and guess what, down and out, and I've done this and I've done that, but guess what, God reached way down. I was, I was, I was so deeply in sin, and then that God had to reach way down. Thing because you just talking loud saying nothing. Amen. We were born in sin, shaping it to, to iniquity. We must be born again in order to go to heaven. So you're telling me you have not been born again. Hello. It's kind of powerful on Father's Day Facebook. Amen. We're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it. And then this is how I arrived now ago. And I will say to my father, Father. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I, look, watch this. He said, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. He didn't want to go there. He said, look, I have messed up really bad. I'm not even worried to be called your son anymore. How bad I messed up. You got to see yourself messed up. And you got to judge yourself. And if you judge yourself, can't nobody else judge you. It's okay to lie. I commend the one to begin to say, turn around and do something wrong and step down. I commend that person because now they feel bad. God is sorry about what they have done. They repented. God forgave them. They asked forgiveness. And God is faithful. And he forgave them. But look, when you get up there and you don't work, I don't have any respect for a person that would not admit or confess their fault one to another. Well, the Bible says confess your fault one to another. Can I hear the witness here? I don't have no respect for somebody that not, will not admit. Amen. Amen. Number one, you don't feel that you've done anything wrong. You feel that you, Amen. You feel that you haven't done anything wrong. Everything is good. This, uh, this is not what the son is saying. The son, watch this. This is what he said. He said, I am. He said, am, and am no more worthy, in verse 19, to be called thy son. And then he said, make me as one of the hired servants. In other words, I'm not worthy to be placed back to where I came from. Make me as, yeah. Y'all better hear this. I'm not worthy to be of this. Let God make the choice and choose because for God knows. Everybody say, for Father knows best. Father knows best. He knows best. Even in the midst of our adversities, Father knows best. Yes, Lord. He knows what's best for us. It was good that things turn out the way that it did in order for us to get in the right place that we're supposed to be. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. So he acknowledged what he done wrong. He acknowledged that he was not, not worthy to be called son. He acknowledged that he will go down as a higher servant, as a servant son. Somebody shout yes. I am worthy. I mean, I'm not worthy because son, I will go as a slave. All right, watch this. Verse 20 said, and he rose, he arose, and came to his father. Mind you that he was rehearsing this before he got to his father. Rehearsing his father. Right? And he it was that as uh, when he and he arose and came. 
to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, now look at God. God done made contact. <laughs> and when he was yet a great way off, his father sought him and had compassion. Hallelujah. He didn't go to him, man, I can't wait to get my hands on him. He went out there and messed up like this and blew everything that I gave his inheritance. He didn't, no, no, no. He did not go accusing. He did not go there in any kind of way to ridicule. He did not go there and say, look at you. You are, you are no good for a son. He didn't go with none of that. Watch this. What did he do then? Say so he saw him from a ways off, right? a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck. Can you imagine how he was smelling coming out of all pain? He didn't care about no smell. He didn't care about how dirty he was. He didn't care what he looked like. He ran. He look. Why was he fell on his neck and kissed him? Amen. Can y'all see that? And the son said to him, Father, look at that scalp line, right? Guess who you're speaking to? Amen. Never the father in that vessel. What's this? Look at the name says God in me. Amen. Amen. He said, and this is what he said. He said, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Amen. When we mess up and we approach heaven and say unto God, Lord God, I have sinned against heaven. I have sinned against you. I am not even worthy to be called son. I'm not worthy to be called not even in the fold. I messed up. Amen. Let God decide what he want to do after that. Don't decide on your own. Don't let people decide for you. Y'all better hear this. Don't let people decide for you. Don't you decide on your own. But you go there in the sense of repentance. And you go there in the sense of wanting to be changed. You go there in the sense of godly sorrow. Uh -huh, and, and allow God to do whatever. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. Amen. Right, amen. Don't go there thinking that you deserve something. Man, you done messed up. It's your fault. Yeah, Amen. Amen. I got to bring this on in, y'all. But here was, he said, I'm, saying, I'm not even worthy to be called. I'm not even worthy to be called that son. And then, but, everybody said verse 22, but, what? the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. You see that, that F there? There's a little case there. Now it came right back to the one that can physically go and make orders to the ones that can that's under his service. Yeah. Right? Amen. See, when you're in the right place, the God is in you begin to now give you the authority and the voice and the, that you can order something to happen now. See? Y'all better hear this. Y'all missing this. You notice that keep changing from the lowercase F to the uh, capitalized F? Amen. Amen. And you're like saying, wait a minute, hold on. See, you, you got to realize at this time what is happening here. See, there, there's, a, there's, a, a, there's a change, there's a, uh, and things are done that in the spirit is metal, metaphorically done in the flesh. Amen. Amen. In other words, it's figurative of what is happening, what is in heaven and what God has ordered allow us to physically do what he ordered. If God tells you to give something to somebody, guess what? It's God that gave it to them, but he used you to do it. Y'all better hear this. He used your vessel to do it. Because we know that our good is no better than fit the rags in the sight of God. So we must understand something here that if God allow, if God give you something, he will use whatever he will, whoever he will to do it to you and for you. And God gets all the glory. Yes. Y'all get it? Yes. And this is metaphorically speaking because it's done figuratively of what is done in heaven. Watch this. That will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Y'all better catch that again. The Lord let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So what is being done in heaven now is in earth. And that's God's will for you to do. So therefore you're doing what God has 
permission and what God has given the ability for you to do. So you don't give man the praise, you give it all to God. You say, Lord, I thank you for my Father Amen. on earth. Y'all got it? Yes, that's, a, that's revelation, y'all. That's, that's revelation. That's insight. Great. Amen. And Lord, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And if, if you would allow to open up and let God pour out of himself into you, then it will be you will be able to do what does say the Lord according to what he has written in his word. You will obey what he said. When God tells you to do something, stop frowning your face. And just do it with joy and gladness. Amen. God loving a cheerful dear world. Do it with happiness. You can't wait. Come down on the altar there. See how much you can throw in there. And this is not even about money. God tests you with that. He allows you to be tested with that. Whatever thing you're so close to, He will allow you to be tested with that. If you love money, he will allow you to be tested with your money. Amen. He will. So therefore, get, get so much, so get little for the love of it. Get the love off the money. And be a cheerful giver. And watch this. You then you won't have to worry about giving so much where you still can give. You're going to do it cheerfully and willfully. Amen. Amen. You're going to do it according. And everybody do according to their heart. Whatever your heart says, it determines who you are. Amen. Can I get a witness in? Out of the abundance of the heart. <laughs> As he thinking in his heart. So is he. As he thinking in his heart. So is he. If you think sparingly in your heart. Hello. Hello, somebody. And every man give according to his own heart. Heart. However you give according to your own heart, determine what's in your heart, and it also determine who you are. But no, I'm not like this. I'm, I'm like, no, 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 what do your heart do? What do your heart do? Your heart tells you who your character is. Because it characterizes who you are. And the character that comes from, your, from you is from your heart. Because out of the abundance, the fullness, the plenty of it, it will speak, it will bring out, it will do. Amen. Yeah, amen. So if I would give to you sparingly, guess what? That's what my heart has done. And I cannot say I'm a great giver or a cheerful giver. I'm a sparingly giver. I'm a low giver. I don't give much. And this is me. I can't go and say I'm a big giver. I'm a great giver. I do this and I do that. Because whatever, whatever, whatever I do comes from my heart. And some give grudgingly from the heart. So therefore, it's like they didn't even give any at all. Some people would give and then hate that they gave, gave it. I wish I'd never done this here. This day. I got to do this. I had to pay that bill. <laughs> you should have kept what you had. Because you didn't get you, you. All that was disaccredited to you. Because you didn't do it cheerfully. And if you did it cheerfully and willingly, then whatever that bill is, it's already taken care of anyway. If you did it the right way. Y'all stay with me. There's a whole lot said up in there. All right, so he was, he realized who he was. He realized that he was no longer worthy. And we need to get to the place again where God don't owe us nothing. We owe it all to him. We think that when we woke up this morning, God owed it to me. I supposed to wake up. I went to bed last night. I, I got me eight, nine hours. I supposed to wake up feeling good. You supposed to be nothing. You supposed to do nothing but to serve God as you should and watch the blessings of God so God can bless you. Somebody shout this. Don't think that God owe you anything. Don't think that because you laid down last night, God's supposed to wake you up in the morning. It's a blessing. It's a new day. Thank God that God has given us this day and the mercy, new mercy that he gave us in this day. Somebody shout yes. I don't care how good your report was at the hospital and what kind of board of heaven they gave you, good board of heaven. I don't care about that. No one happened. I've known all of athletes physically fit go out there and play a game and die right there on the court. Somebody shout yes. yes. Don't go thinking that you got power and that you can do this just because. It's because of God. You live you move and have your being because of God. Oh, yes. Can I brag on my father this morning? Yes, yes. Oh, Who's just bragging and boasting off here? Yeah? All, right. All good. 
glory belongs to him. We ain't worthy. This man realized he ain't worthy, and there's a lot of fathers, sons, and daughters out there. Amen. Amen. But the father said, look, but let me go and say this. I got to wrap it up. All right. But the father said to a servant, bring forth. This man said forth to have a, 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 what they call it back in the day, a shame bang. He getting ready to have a, but in a good way. He getting ready to have a party. He getting ready to call everybody. Look, call them together. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna cook a hog, and we're gonna throw a hog on the grill, as we saying out there in our hour. Oh, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna burn a hog today, boy. And we're gonna do this. And look, don't women. And I want you to bring forth the best robe now. Don't come bring them no torn down or in a dirty or filthy robe. I want this robe to be right, perfect. Bring the best robe you got. And then he said, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. Somebody shot this. In other words, he was barefoot. He probably went away with Santa Claus. He came back barefoot. He didn't have anything. Mind, mind you, he, he lost everything. He spent all. He didn't have anything. He didn't have nowhere to sleep except with the swines and, and the that he laid out with. And he ate what they ate, the husk that come to them. The spies eat, he ate what they ate. He slept what they slept, he ate what they ate. So now he was brought down to the most lowest degree that he could be brought down to unto nothing. But guess what? That spirit, that king that God had placed in him, that person, that son that God had placed in him, somebody shout yes, it began to fly up. And he came to himself. He realized this man and I in his how this hard pain, that's not me. This man and getting up is me. So therefore, this is the real me. Somebody shout yes. I don't care what somebody say about you, how they talk about you, how they try to demean you, how they begin to try to make you feel bad, how they belittle you, how they do whatever to you. Guess what? You need to realize I am somebody. I belong to the king. I belong to God, the king of all kings and Lord of all lords. I am a king. child. Somebody shout yes up in here. You don't need nobody to validate you. You don't need nobody to give you the, your definition. You know who you are. I belong to God. Stop letting people run you down and telling you who you are. You know who you are. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You don't. I don't need no validation. Amen. I don't need you to tell me who I am. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You can't give a definition of who I am because I know who I am and know whose I am. Somebody shout yes. Do you feel confident this morning? Do you feel so confident that regardless of whatever people say, that you already know who you are and who you are? Somebody shout yes. Somebody's going, somebody's going thank you, Holy Spirit. I believe somebody's going through Facebook. And somebody has been, they have belittled you. They have defined you to be what they want you to be as nothing. Can I get a witness here? Jesus. They have tried to validate. They can't validate you. You know who you are. I want you to be confident today. To be confident in a way that you know who you are and you don't need nobody to tell you. You are a child of the living God. Somebody shout yes up there. Yes. And say, I am somebody. I am somebody. I don't care what you say. Amen. I am somebody. I'm who God said that I am. Somebody yes. shout yes. yes. Amen. Yes. He fell down and he fell short. And guess what? He sinned. But he repented. He repented. He repented. He repented. And by doing so, as he rehearsed, he repented before he got to his physical father. He spoke to the real father. First and foremost. And he talked to God about it. Yes, Amen. He came to himself. Y'all better hear this. And watch this. If he didn't have the right thing in him of himself, who he really is, he couldn't come to no more than who he was. Y'all might miss this. I want y'all to miss this. You can't come to holiness if holiness is not in you. Yes. It's powerful, y'all. You got to have holiness in you to come to. Yes. 
Y'all listen to me. Yes. Y'all hear me good? Yes. You can't come to something that is not in you. It has to be in you before you can come to it. Amen. 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 I can say what's in me all I want to. But when it comes down to it, I better have it in me. Yes. Y'all missing this. Amen. We can't be raised from the dead in righteousness and holiness without having the self same spirit Amen. of Christ in us. Jesus. I can recite scriptures all day long. Amen. I can even perform, put on a dance and put on a shout. I can holler, I can hoop. I can even sing. That's what the older people say. You can sing a lot as quick as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to be. You have to be. You must be, Nicodemus, born again. stuff going on. Fooling people. You have to be. This young man had it in him in order to come to himself who the real him was. It was in him. Couldn't nobody snatch that away from him. He was humiliated. He was homeless. He was hungry. He assigned himself over to the city of two aces of that country. But here it is now. But this is treating him like one of the animals. You're just like the swine to me because you're going to eat what the swine eat. So you are a swine. You're a hog. You're going to sleep with him, dude. You're a hog. That's the way the world do you. But guess what? That king's child that was in him rose up. The Bible said, he said, he said, I will arise and go. Amen. I will. See, we got to have a I will in us from God. We got to have a true I will in us to move and to go forward. Yes, Lord. You don't have that I will, you don't have that will which is the will of God, our will must be changed and converted over to the will of God. And God will do all that he said in his word that he will do. So our will has to be changed. Amen. Our mind has to be converted. To, transformed to the mind of Christ. Amen. Then our affections will change and we will set our affection above and not on this earth. Amen. Amen. Where Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father. This is Father Day. Right hand of the Father. Amen. If we got Christ, then guess where he's sitting? On the right hand of the Father. So therefore, there's the Father in you. Yes, sir. Yeah. God in me. God in me. You're talking about God the Father. There's a father that's in you. If you notice here that from the lowercase f to the capitalized f, it did it. It was then you know it denoting something here. Amen. This is Jesus speaking. There was no mistake with that. If you got the capitalized, you got the capital father in you, then you got the father. You can be the father. Y'all would hear this. That God has orchestrated and made you to be. Mm. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. And you won't take wooden nickels. You won't, definitely. You will do it, whatever the cost is, you will stand. Amen. And it's gonna go. You had to give up everything. Yes, indeed. You had to give up all in order to receive everything. Mm -hmm. But you'll get it back. Stop worrying about when you're gonna get it back. So they went out and here was as he did. They celebrated. Can I get a witness on me in closing? They celebrated. 
And as they celebrated, I want you to see something that happened here. There was the elder son, the older son. The one who was giving his too, but he didn't go. He stayed at home, maybe. He didn't want to go out. Some people got, they, you give them a blessing, they just want to hold on to it, don't do nothing with it. Amen. But I want you to hear something here. I'm going to get this and we're going we're gonna to close it out. Watch this. But the father said, and he was a torn apart in there. But watch this. For this my son, in verse 24, for this my son was dead and is alive again. Yeah. He was lost and he is found. Yeah. And they began to be married. Somebody shout yes. Yeah. Now the elder son, this is what I want to let's talk to him just a little bit and we come close. The elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called on the servants and asked, what these things meant? He mean, he's curious. So the noise going on, the music and dancing going on, this, this merry good time going on. What is going on over there? And he said to him, this is what the servants said, Thy brother is come, semi-clone, and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound. Watch this. And he was angry and would not go in. This is the elder brother. He won't have me about it. He knew his brother had left and was out there in the wilderness, out there somewhere. Don't know where he was, don't know what's going on, or what's happening to him, but he was not even concerned about it. Right? Y'all looking at this? Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. And they like some of us. All I have done for you. Neither transgress I at any time that commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid. It's the oldest son talking about. I never sinned against you, Father. I have been here serving you all these many years. Why well, I'm talking about what he done. And he said, and you have not gave me a kid or go or or a uh, 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 young whatever you call a kid like this. They can be a spine new route or whatever it is. He said that I might make merry with my friends. And hear what he's saying there. Hear this. There's a revelation of this. But as soon as this that son was come, this that son is telling my brother. He didn't say his brother then. It's this that son, your son, in other words. Which have devoured thy living with heart. Thou hast killed for him the fattest calf. Now, ain't that something for a brother, the elder brother, to say about his younger brother? He should have been rejoicing with him. He was the envy of him. Same thing going on there. Verse 31 said, and he said to him, before the father said, he said, son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Y'all ready to hear this? Amen. See, this is where I get spiritual with it. Watch this. Do you, know not, do you not know that what God is saying to us? God is saying, children, the earth is mine, the food is the earth, the world, and all that dwell in it is mine. He said, all of this belongs to me. And you are heirs of mine, joined as with my son Jesus. And all that Jesus, I mean, that I have, belong to you. But the problem is with us, we don't know how to tap into it and ask, but we don't know how to handle it. So God will not allow us to receive what will cause us to stop serving him as he should, as we should. Yeah. Y'all get it? So some of us, first thing, first thing come to mind when you're talking about giving, what's the first thing you hear the first mind? Money. Why is that? And when, look, a person can be, look, bedridden. And you talk about a blessing, the first thing, instead of them wanting to get help and get well and get right, 
Because the Lord, first thing they told me, think about money, right? They'll be on that bed like this here. Trying to get that cross money. It'll be like this here. And this is not marking nobody. This is not, he's trying to really kill nobody. This is real life. Y'all seen it happen. They be after that money. And soon, soon they can just barely get it in the hand of Fall in there. They just find it here, as soon as they get that, they go for a, a, a female, gown to gown, and put a step in there. Just to know, and, and you know, the first place that God is looking close to their heart. And it's, it's, it's bad when it gets like that, right? When you are on your bed of affliction, you don't need what money going to do for you. But this is the mindset of the carnal mind. And this is what happens. It's, it's normal. It's normal reaction. That's why we need the Spirit of Christ in us. Because the Spirit of Christ will be asking for those things with his uh, of necessity, right? right. We'll know what things to ask for. Yeah. Right? And we'll stop. When you got a lot of money, a lot of money, you want more money. Somebody start talking about uh, giving you a gift. First thing you want to think about is money. Why is that? You need the healing for your soul. In other words, you should be saying, look, pray, just pray for me. Pray that my mind, I, I thank God, look, that, that I have to keep it on my right mind, and then pray that I can continue, because sometimes I forget things. Why aren't you praying for things that you really have a necessity of? Amen. But here was that this, this, I mean, the elder son had access to all of this father. Now this father here going right back, this is metaphorically speaking of what is figuratively done in heaven versus what is, I mean, on earth as it is in heaven. All right, watch this. So now he had access to all of this. It was accessible to him. But he didn't have the right mind to realize that if he wanted to invite his friends to have a nice time in the law. He got access to all of this. Y'all keep missing out on what pastor keep trying to tell everybody. You tell anything, you got access to it. It is acceptable and accessible. The accessibility is for you that you got access to it. All you have to do is just tap into it and just do it. Not to misuse or to abuse or to manipulate, but to use it in a right perspective and respectively. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? If you gave you a million, what are you going to do with it? Well, first thing I'm going to give me a house. You haven't even thought about that. I see, then you're already on the wrong page. I'm going to give me a house. Um, then I'm going to get me another car. I'll tell you that hoop that I got just ain't working right. And uh, I'm going to get me a new car and get all this. And then, uh, let's see, I'll probably get a, get a few clothes out. Yeah, get some more clothes. I need some more shoes and uh, some more clothes and uh, get that. Oh, man, I'll tell you, my refrigerator going to be full. I'm going to get me two deep freezers. I'm going to get me this. <laughs> I'm going to get that and fill that up and all that. Do you know who you would put last on this, what people put last on this? Uh, and he's supposed to be first. No, let me change. Let me thank the Holy Spirit. Not suppose me first. God is first. Maybe not in your life, but God is first. God is number one, whether you like it or not. Can I get a witness? But we'll think about everything, and then we'll say, oh, yeah, I'm all. And then I'm all. I'm going to put, put some in the church. <laughs> you know how long the list that came before you thought about anything dealing with God? You thought about nobody but you. Nobody but you. And if you're selfish, that's what happens. And you don't have the spirit of Christ. But Christ is selfless. He gave and he gave it all for us. And y'all stay with me. So here it is, the young, the older son. He had access, but he didn't know how to use it. Amen. Praise the Lord. He, he had the wrong combination. He had the wrong mind. So therefore, his mind, he didn't come to his, himself in a sense to realize he could have done that at any given time. Can I get a witness here? And with nothing wrong with it. The father let him know that. And this is what the father said to him, and the father said to him. But as soon as that son here was that, he said, and he was angry, right? And here it is, and the father answered and said, said to his father, he said, the father, know these many years he had served, and he had also um, uh, uh, sinned against his father. Amen. And you 
you never gave him a kid. He said, I might be married. Yeah. But as soon as the, and, uh, this past son was come and had to vow on his living and everything, you're going to celebrate him in other words. And then he said to him, son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Can I get a witness? And then it was, it, it was me that we should make merry and be glad for this guy. Brother, this is the most important thing here now, which was David and is alive again and was lost and is found. Somebody shout, yes, we need to yeah. understand some things. We need to stop being selfish, yeah. thinking about ourselves. We need to stop thinking about it and think about, look, watch this. We need to put ourselves in the predicament and put ourselves in the spot and the position of somebody else and stop worrying about what's going to happen to me, what I'm going to do after this. No, you shouldn't think like that. Your first, you should first of all think about what can I do in order to help somebody else. Somebody shout yes up in here. It doesn't matter, but I would if I, 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 I would if I could, but I, I, I can't and I ain't. In other words, that's the thing that comes for most people, the negativism. And they tell you, look, I can't and I ain't. Because number one, you know what? I got to pay this bill here, and I got to do this, and I got to do that. You don't even know what tomorrow is going to bring. You might not even be here tomorrow, but this person needs you today. Can I get a witness here? I'm not saying to be manipulated or to be used or abused by somebody. I'm just telling you to use, utilize it in the right perspective, the way that Christ will use it, and in the right spirit. Can I get a witness here? Here it is. We will always look at what can I do for me instead of what can I do for somebody else. Can I get a witness here? We begin to start looking so much more at a, in a selfish manner instead of looking in a way to uh, help somebody else that it could have been you in that predicament. Seek you not your own, but another man's wealth also. We need to understand that. We need to stop seeking out what can I do to accommodate me. We don't like to inconvenience ourselves. That's why we don't. We don't make sacrifices because we don't like to inconvenience ourselves. We can be sleeping. Here it is. You get a call to wake you up. Why do you think the call woke you up? And the person needs you. That's why they call you. And here it is. You don't want to check on them. I can see if the right standard more. It just happens all the time. But if somebody needs you, you can't put them off. Well, look, how I'll, uh, I'll check on you tomorrow about twelve o'clock because I. Yeah, um, yeah, I got to be the work. You got to be the work. No, you need me and I got to be the work. Forget about work right now. You are more important to me right now than the work is. Can I get a witness here? Not to be used or abused by, but you need to look at it in that way, in that fashion. If that person needs you, you're going to shut them off to come back tomorrow when I'm up and when I'm woke and when I'm when I, when I get home, I get off at 3 o'clock, so they'll check on me about 3 o'clock. And then, no, the person needs you right now. Can I get a witness here? There's too many of us that are not allowing, if we got the Spirit of Christ, not allowing the Spirit of Christ to work in us. Amen. If you got the Spirit of Christ, then you let them work. Forget about you. I guarantee you, if you was hurting when you went to bed and somebody woke you up, when you get up and go and try to apply yourself to somebody else, guess what? That pain will go away. Amen. Your name again, so Father knows best. Father knows best. And here was the God wants us to share this thing and, and the best gift that we can give to a father on Father's Day. Amen. Unto God the Father is our lives, our soul. Amen. Amen. A Father's gift on Father's Day. When his son returned home, the one that was lost, that was the best happy Father's Day gift that he could ever receive. Amen. That was a real Father's Day gift. Yes, Lord. I say that in a sense that the best gift we can give to the Lord, to God is how it's said, come home. Children, come home. Come home. Come home. Everything is planned, planned for you. Everything is laid out for you. There's a fat can awaiting you. There's a robe awaiting you. There's a ring of gold awaiting you. There's sandals ready to go on your feet. There's an embracing waiting for you. There's a kissing on your neck waiting for you. Come 
home. Come home. That's if you can get your family promise. Come home. I don't know how many of you that has children out there. Till I mean, let them know. I'm hoping that they are somewhere listening to this or, or share this message, share this, this, this uh, I'm sending to them. Tell them to come home. Come home. It's okay. Come on home. You have a home to come to. Amen. And this is what God is saying to us. Come home. Come home. Come back to the Garden of Eden. Come home. You were lost. You was born in the sea and shaped into an enemy. But come back to the Garden. Come on back home. Come on back home. That's why we must be born again. Come on back home. Amen. Thank you. 